Ava. Hi, this is Carly from In The Loop, and I'm here with Gabriella Izzo, the 2019 U.S. Junior National Champion. Hi, Gabby. Hi. So, first question, just for listeners to learn about you, can you tell us a bit about yourself, like introduce yourself to the audience and tell us about your skating journey? Yeah, definitely. So, my skating journey actually started a little bit later than most. Like, I didn't start seriously skating until I was maybe 10 years old probably like very serious when I was 11 and it was mainly because my brother had started doing hockey and I was kind of bored just sitting at the rink when he was practicing so I asked my mom and my dad if I could put on my own pair of skates and just play around so then I played around for a few years until he ended up quitting and then when we moved to Boston I did we decided that I wanted to try it more seriously because I enjoyed it so much so really yeah and then I started off with Suna Murray at the Skating Club of Boston. And then two and a half years ago, I switched to Mark Mitchell and Peter Johansson. Yeah. So where do you train now? Tra- I train in Revere, Massachusetts. So you're still in Massachusetts. So it's like yeah. kind of familiar territory to you. Yes, definitely. But yeah. Um, so would you say like, when did you start really like doing competitions? Very seriously, probably like 11 years old. Like my first regionals was when I was 11. Okay. Did you gain interest in it because of, oh, like, watching other people skate while your brother did hockey? Or did you just, like, oh, I want to do something, so let's do skating? I want to do something. I'm really bored watching (laughs) this cold rink. So you just kind of, like, fell into skating? Yeah. That's really interesting. It's, like, figure skating is not something that's been in my family before. Yeah. So you you were, like, innovating? Yeah. (laughs) I'm glad you got into it. Like, that's really interesting. My brother also did hockey, but sadly, I did not get into figure skating. (laughs) So uh, going into the new season, uh, you are the 2019 U.S. Junior National Champion. That's awesome. So how does that affect you going into this season? How do you feel? Honestly, I think, I mean, obviously, it was wonderful to win nationals. It was like a dream come true. But I feel like with every new season, it's kind of a clean slate. And it's almost like, you don't necessarily need to prove yourself again, but you want to not only pick up where you left off, but you want to show that you can be even better and you want to be always improving and progressing. And I mean, a title at the end of the day is just a title and it doesn't mean anything if you don't have actions and programs to back it up. So you're more about continuously improving and just like, and not skating for a title, but skating for skating skating for skating to having the best performances that are possible in that given day and moment as well as just like taking it day by day and program by program because what I did last year doesn't matter so much in the sense of how it predicts how this year is going to go it's a total different ball game it's different everything so it's just taking it day by day and being like like in the moment when with the music yeah that's really awesome so speaking of going into the new season, uh, your new programs are on the U.S. Figure Skating Fan Zone. Uh, we have I Am Here from The Color Purple and Starry Starry Night, and that's beautiful music. I've heard both of those songs. So can you tell us a little bit about how they came about? Yeah, definitely. So my coach, Mark Mitchell, he does all like the music editing and finding music, and he's amazing at it. Like He works magic. And we got my short first. And we were kind of thinking, I want to know I wanted something dramatic, something that told a story, but I wasn't quite sure where I wanted to go with that. And then he had found this piece of music and he said, I think it's really good for your senior national debut because it's like making a statement like I am here, like I'm someone to be reckoned with. It's a big, bold statement, which is kind of everything we've been going for up until this point. It's like, okay, I was junior and now I'm senior, like I really am here. And then with my long, we had a little more of a difficult time because I really loved this piece of music, but to just skate to Starry Starry Night for four minutes, it would get a little repetitive. So he had to mix it with something else. And I'm not, I don't exactly know what the other instrumental part of it is, but it took a little bit of time, but I think we ended up with something really cool and unique. Mm -hmm. So for Starry Starry Night and the mix that you have, is there a sort of like feeling you're trying to convey with that music? Yeah, almost like a celebration of life and specifically Vincent's life to be really specific, but like a celebration of life, like 
it's bittersweet. It's a little melancholy, but it's like happy in a sense because I mean, the storyline is very sad, but it's a soft piece of music that still has a little bit of power behind it. And it tells almost a foreboding and like sad story, but at the same time, there's happy moments that are need to be cherished and celebrated as well. Mm -hmm. It's a very beautiful piece of music. I'm excited to see you skate to it. So we read you'll be attending Harvard University in the fall. Are you there yet? No, um, actually, I'm. we decided that I would take a gap year and I would oh, okay. next year. So that's exciting, too. <laughs> yeah. What do you plan to be your major? Um, I want to go into sports medicine. Oh, really? Is that like kind of inspired by your experiences in the sport? Definitely. I've also always been pretty interested in medicine, but I got to know a lot of like orthopedists and physical therapists and it just seems like something I could see myself doing and thoroughly enjoying. So would you say that like going into sports medicine after your skating career would you continue to be in the sport like as a doctor? If I wanted to at that point in my life I could definitely see myself going down that path or just definitely working with high level athletes or just athletes in general because I think it's a totally different world when you're an elite athlete and I don't think a lot of people understand that so to have a medical provider that is in the same mindset as you are and understands that sometimes just taking time off isn't possible is and to be like innovative in the recovery aspect I think that would be really cool as well yeah definitely having some experience with high level sports would be great for someone in that field so uh, how do you really balance your life with your skating like is it something that's more of a challenge for you or are you used to it by now? I think I'm pretty used to it by now because I went to full-time school at Boston Latin School which in of itself has a huge reputation of being very hard very work intensive but it does pay off so I didn't really have a choice and I had to balance my school and my skating so I would go to school full-time 7:45 to 2:15, and then I would rush to the rink and I'd be to the rink until 7 30 7 7 30 then I would come home and do homework until late at night, maybe even early in the morning some days. So I guess I just didn't think about it that much. I just mm -hmm. knew what I had to do and I had to get done. So I think balancing that and being really efficient has been a big part of my life. People are always asking me, like, how do you do it? Like, that's so amazing or whatever. And this doesn't need to come off like a brag or, or a boast. But it's just something that I didn't quite think about because I not that I didn't have a choice. I, I mean, I did have a choice, but it was. I wanted to do both and I was going to set my mind to it and get both done. I wasn't going to let one be sacrificed because of the other or vice versa. If I wanted mm -hmm. to done, I was going to figure out a way to get both done. Yeah. So it wasn't just, it wasn't think about it. It was just do it. Yeah. So do you think going forward, like as you take your steps into college, do you think that will change? Like you're balancing life and skating or do you think your experience in the past will help you? I think my experience, or at least I hope my experience in the past will help me because, I mean, I don't think there is a way to balance life and skating when skating is a huge part of your life and maybe is your life at some points. So mm -hmm. the only way to figure it out is to find like that quote unquote happy medium or find like an equilibrium and just be able to do both to the best of your ability. And maybe you miss out on some social gatherings or maybe you can't spend as much time in the ring because you have to study. But at the end of the day, you're still getting maximum amount from each it may be mm -hmm. a little bit harder and it's a little more tiring, but I know that's what I want. So that's the path I've decided to take. Yeah. So it's just a matter of like knowing what you want to do and being okay with, you know, maybe you have to sacrifice a little bit of one thing for another, but eventually you'll get that balance back. Yeah, definitely. So um, on your uh, biography, one of your listed interests is in volunteering. So can you tell us a little bit about like how that came about, like what you do and what inspires you to do it? So I've always had a bit of like a heavy heart. Like when I see things on TV, like I have a big crier, like when I watch movies or anything and it's sad, like I'm always like I feel I tend to feel things like very intensely or so I've been told by other people. So I always knew that I wanted to like try and help it to make like a difference in whatever, whatever I can do. So I started volunteering at the skating club of Boston and they had this a therapeutic skating program where it was. Um, kids with mental and physical disabilities, they would come and we would teach them how to skate. And I just found that so enlightening, not only, I mean, it was joyous to watch them as they learned, but also like to figure out 
how to get around different obstacles when you're trying to teach people. And then I kind of took that into like an academic realm and I like peer tutored at my school and peer mentored at my school. And then actually in the fall, I'll be volunteering at um, Franciscan Children's Hospital on the units with the children who are usually severely handicapped or something has gone on. Maybe they're like on a trach or they had a stroke or something. So I'll be volunteering with them as well. That's just really awesome. So would you say like, is that something you want to continue in the future? Definitely a hundred percent. It's kind of funny. I guess I was always kind of going down this path because even when I was little, when like my birthday came around or someone else's birthday, I've always enjoyed like picking out gifts and giving gifts to people more than I like receiving gifts myself. Cause I feel like I tend to want to give more than I want to receive sometimes. I mean, it's always nice to receive a nice, thoughtful present, but I love putting in the thought and the process of giving other people things. So I think not only Mm -hmm. it's rewarding to the people that I'm helping, but it's also self-rewarding, which gets into, like, there are no unselfish acts, but whatever. (laughs) (laughs) No, I know. I, I totally understand that. It's just, like, very nice to, like, think about other people and do your best to help other people. Plus, it's very, like, grounding because, I mean, sometimes it's like, wow, I'm making a big deal about this sport and I'm having a tough day. But, like, there are people who don't have food or don't have water. So it's like, okay, I need to realize, like, take a step back, realize that I'm very privileged to be doing this sport and everything that entails. And I see all the work that my parents put into it, especially my mom, to provide for it. So it's it's grounding and it's eye-opening as well. So I think Mm -hmm. it's people a little perspective as well so do you have like role models both in and outside of figure skating that sort of inspire you to do these things yeah definitely so I think my coaches for most are definitely my role models especially like Mark and Peter but also like Diana Miro like she's we call her Lady Di at our rank but she's a miracle worker I love her she's a huge inspiration and then Michelle Kwan, just her work ethic and some of the quotes she says, I think they're just amazing. And it shows that it's not always the most talented, although she was incredibly talented, but it's not, it's the amount of work that you put in and the perseverance and the unwillingness to give up that really makes it decides who's on top of the podium. So I think definitely in skating, it would be those. And then Outside of skating, I think my mom would probably be my biggest role model and inspiration because, I mean, so many people, especially in our family, told her and me it wouldn't be possible. Like, skating wasn't it's too expensive. It's too time consuming. It's not possible if you want to get a good education. But she took the brunt of it and she never gave up on me, but also never gave up on herself as well. Like, she works two jobs now to provide for my skating and, like, I'm appreciate everything she does and I know how physically draining and mentally draining it is but she never ever gave up and I can't thank her enough for it because her not giving up allowed me to pursue what I wanted to do what I dreamed Mm -hmm. so it's just like she believed in you yeah and she allowed me to believe in myself I guess I think it's really nice to have role models both in and out of like figure skating like ones that motivate you within the sport and within like outside of the sport you know yeah Definitely. There's got to be some kind of balance. It's not all about skating. Exactly. So going back to uh, this season's programs, uh, do you have a favorite element or piece of choreography that you like to perform from these programs or just a favorite part, really? So in my short program, in the footwork, there's this little like sassy section where she says, I'm going to flirt with somebody. And it's like a moment where I can really just perform and look at the judges right in the eye. So that's one of my favorite things to do in my short because it's such like it's almost like a break from the rest of the program like I've done the jumps at that point I'm in the footwork I can like really give it my all and it's it's a fun part to do and then the very beginning of my long I love to do the very beginning of my long because we had like this idea of like painting a painting in the beginning like actually painting so some of the movements are inspired by that as well as like in the footwork it goes back to being slow and it's happy yet bittersweet and again we have the painting motif so I just think that the level of intricacy and the level of continuation in the choreography is really fun in the long and really enjoyable to do and then that little flirty part in my short is really fun to do too. Mm -hmm. So it's it's nice to have like little moments that aren't you know just like here's a jump or like here's a spin like but here is something that I'm like you know actively like contributing and 
making it its own program. Yes. It almost brings the program to life instead of transition, transition, jump, crossover. Yeah. Transition. And it breathes life into it. Exactly. So it's like those little moments in the program that like make you feel like you're making it your own. Yeah. So is there a type of genre of program or like type of music that you would really like to challenge? I'm starting or trying my hardest to think of challenges as opportunities. But I last year, it was very out of my comfort zone to do um, my like not jazzy, but my more upbeat program, short program to summertime. So that was definitely like outside of my comfort zone, but it was a lot of fun for me to try. So I think this year I've gone with two more dramatic and softer or not soft, but a little bit more like what I'm comfortable with in a certain like balletic sense. But other times like I need to be strong and staccato. So I'm working on that. But I think I would love to go again into a little more upbeat or like jazzy or sassy and like intense but in a slightly different way be a lot of fun to try and conquer that I think having like the diversity and the variability is really important in the sport too I mean look at Mm -hmm. and he's doing like rap music and it looks amazing so (laughs) yeah so it's basically all about like challenging yourself moving yourself out of your comfort zone while still maintaining that sense of self yeah so what type of programs do you enjoy watching like what type of programs do you enjoy like experiencing I honestly it comes down to the skater because I can watch anything and appreciate the gracefulness or the jazziness of a program I think it's incredible what some people can do and how they can move sharply and how they can let movements flow into others I know one of my favorite skaters to watch was always Javier Fernandez because I found his program so entertaining and yet so beautiful at the same time And I just Mm -hmm. to be able to show like the difference in tempo and the different sides of different skaters. I enjoy just watching like all different types because I think you can tell when a skater really enjoys their program. And I think that really comes out. And when they put their self into it, it's really nice to see. Mm -hmm. So that kind of answers my next question is if you could have like the skills of any figure skater in the world, what would it be? Would it be? Like, you know, the ability to convey any type of program? I think it would be, oh, that's hard. I think I would want to convey any type of program, but at the same time, it'd be, I want to do all the jumps, that I, like quads, quints, whatever. Like, I want to do all that. <laughs> so I think uh, maybe an ability to mix both the athleticism and the performance part of the sport, have the technical content to par with the top people in the world but also to be a performer that draws in not only the judges but also the audience and moves people like I guess you could say like a Nathan Chen or a Yevgenia Medvedeva, Yuna Kim, Carolina Costner like they all had the ability the technical ability yet they also brought the program component side to life as well. Mm -hmm. So how do you really train yourself in you know, di- like conveying a program's emotions? Like, how do you work on that? It is really hard when you're running your program to think about that, but you're also thinking about the jumps. So it's difficult, but I have like a great team and whatever and people around me. And sometimes we draw faces for me to look at or for other people to look at on the like hockey plexiglass. So we draw faces and always like, my coach and I was talking, I'll be doing my program and she'll scream eyes, like keep your eyes up, like neck long. And then there's also a choreographer or a dance choreographer who knows how to skate, Deirdre Williams. She comes in and she works on the expression and keeping the elements and the movements long and continuous and little details. And then I also had the great opportunity to work with Ashley Wagner once on my performance aspect. So we do spend time on it and it's really hard and it's something that I think takes the back burner a lot when we're trying out there to get these triple jumps or triple triples or even quads if people are doing that so I think it does take the back burner but it's important to work on that level of artistry as well. Mm -hmm. So this was kind of answered with your role models but like how do you motivate yourself with respect to figure skating like what motivates you within the sport? I mean it's obviously it has to come with from within but at the same time it's I see all the sacrifices that have been made for me especially coming from my mom and I'm like okay like if she can do that like I can whatever I'm facing like I can do this and it's also I know what I want and I know however hard it is 
going to be to get there. Like, I know I have to put in the work to get there. So I'm not going to shirk around the work because that's not going to get me the result I want. So the only way to be motivated is to know what you want and understand how hard it is going to be to get there. So it's really about putting in the work to get what you want and being that dedicated. Yeah. And sometimes, I mean, you're not always going to have the best date of your life and it's going to be disheartening. You're going to, I'm always upset when I don't skate well, even on a regular training day. Like it's hard because you're putting in 150%. You're giving it everything you have. And sometimes it just doesn't work or you're going about it in the wrong way. And I think it's those moments that, how this sounds so cheesy, but it's like those moments that define us in a sense. Like you miss a jump in a program. Okay. You have to come back and you have to be able to get all the other elements done and perform your heart out of that program because yeah, you missed a few points, but you can earn them back. You can earn some of them back. So I think the level of not only consistency with jumps and spins, but also just the level of effort has to be maximum and tip top all the time. Even if one day you're trying your hardest and maybe that day your level of effort can only get up to an 80%, you're still giving as much as you can. Then you push Mm -hmm. yourself to 90, 95. Like, it's not enough to settle and be complacent. So it's very much about, like, doing your just your best, really. Yeah, but also being smart about it because you don't want to overwork. And then mm-hmm. That's a really good point. So what are your goals for this season? You said earlier that, you know, like, every season is a clean slate for you. So what do you want to do this season, you know, as opposed to last season? I think this season, I really want to go out and make each performance better than the last even starting from last season, like I want to make each performance better than last, improve in some aspect of my skating, improve on the jumps and their cleanliness and transitions in and out, improve on the spins and the GOE, the program components. I just want everything to just keep building. Mm-hmm. I don't want to stay in the same spot at any point. Like an analogy would be like a shark has to keep swimming forward and it can never stop or go backwards. So it's kind of like, okay, I need to be a shark this year as I skate. Like, I'm always going to keep going forward and being hungry for more and just keep pushing myself. And I want that to show when I perform. That's awesome. So you're just constantly focusing on improving yourself. Yeah. And I think as I go out and I get ready to compete, it's again, it's an opportunity. I mean, maybe it's hard and it's challenging, but it's an opportunity at the same time to show a little bit of myself out on the ice. Do you like to like put yourself out there on ice and be like, like, you know, kind of like in your upcoming short program, like, this is me, here I am. Yeah, I think it's a lot easier when you're landing all the jumps and everything's ex- executing nicely. And you're like, all right, this is fun. Like, yay. But I think it's, it gets harder, even if everything's not perfect, and you have to fight for it, but you still get it done. But it's, it's about like bringing people in. And I think sometimes I do struggle with that. I tend to be like very self oriented, like when I'm skating, like maybe I'll be a little more introverted with some of my movements, but I mean, in reality, no one pays to come and see an introvert when you skate. Like you don't go to a play to see someone talk to themselves. You want to see a performance. So I think being it's as hard as it is with athleticism and jumps and technique, I think there's also a performance level that I want to highlight as well as my technical ability and technique. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the interesting thing about like, sports like figure skating and gymnastics is they have that performance aspect yeah for example like a football player or soccer player they there's no performance I mean there is they have to put on a great sportsmanship and this and that but they don't have to look pretty and they're not being judged on if they look pretty as they tackle someone to the ground Mm -hmm. and they're not being judged on like their form as they tackle it you know did you get the ball to the end zone I'm not saying they're not hard sports they're incredibly difficult and I could not imagine putting myself through that grueling amount of work it's just different exactly like there's always the difference and you have to respect that difference yeah definitely so speaking as you know you you said you kind of started later than most skaters do you have any advice for people like young skaters starting later who might be discouraged by that yeah I would say I mean there's that old saying like hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard like regardless of where you start or how far other people think you're going to go, or whatever it may be, if you give up, or if you don't give it 100%, you've lost. Like, the game is lost. You're not coming back for that winning point at the end, or whatever. You're not going to have those clean run-throughs, and you're not going to have that medal around your neck. I mean, there's no easy way to do this. You just have to buckle down 
and keep going. It's the desire and the will and the perseverance. I mean, I just heard Evan Lysacek speak a few days ago. He was talking about how maybe the year that he won the Olympics, that nationals, he didn't have a great program, but he went back home and he decided that if I want to be Olympic champion and I want to be uh, with that medal around my neck, I have to buckle down and I need to do grueling effort and I'm not leaving the ice until I've given it all my all. And I think that's the only way you're going to find, even if you don't find success in the traditional sense, like you have a medal around your neck, you have titles and trophies lining up your room. If you have the personal satisfaction that you've given your all and you're exhausted to the point that you know you've done everything you can, then the accolades will follow. You're Mm -hmm. personally happy. And then when you're personally happy, it gets rewarded because then you skate freer, you skate more confident than you've done everything you can. And the performances, not that they get easier, it's always stressful and anxious, but you know you've done everything you can. So the only way to go forward is to just let yourself do what you've done and what you've, and show the body of work that you've prepared. Mm -hmm. So would you say that kind of the main factors of like your work ethic, your skating are determination and like personal successes? I think one of the main things is definitely like the determination. I think sometimes I probably get a little sidetracked with the personal successes and I'm like, Oh God, I want, I want the medal. Like I want the title. But I think at the same time, I definitely don't want to be left with the regret that I could have done more. Like I'm Mm. not okay with that thought. I'm not going to stop working until A, I'm told to because I'm going to injure myself or B, I know that I've done everything in my power because at the end of the day, it comes down to who skates best on that day. But the determinant of who skates best on that day is the hours and hours of training you've done leading up to it. I think determination and grit and wanting to do it makes yeah. them care who they are. So final question. It's kind of a fun question. If you could let the figure skating fan community know one thing about you, what would it be? I'm really obsessed with cats. Like, <laughs> I really am. Like I have like cats like all over my room. I have I had two cats. One of them recently passed. But I really like cats. I just think they're fun. And they're cool and they're funny and they always land on their feet. So I think it's a great role model for skating. Yeah. You can, yeah, I don't know. I've always liked cats. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. All right. So that's the end of the questions. Thank you so much for talking with us, Gabby. Uh, you guys can catch Gabby at her upcoming competition, uh, Junior Grand Prix Riga. The schedule for this event will be posted on our Twitter pretty soon. And our episode on the first two Junior Grand Prix will be released this Wednesday. If you want to support Gabby, you can follow her on Instagram at miss.gabby with two E's. Thank you so much for listening and thank you so much, Gabby.